Here's Brody Brazil. So obviously I've been at the whole broadcast thing for quite a while now. And in the last several years, I've been making a ton of videos here on YouTube. It's a lot of content from me to you. Hopefully you've enjoyed and or appreciated at least some of it. By the way, I completely appreciate all of you who have shown me so much support over all the platforms across all the different years. And with that said, I feel like I never actually get to return the favor in at least sharing my approach professionally. The things I put together, my positions on them, why I have certain takes here and there. And maybe you think you can understand some of it, putting this and this and this together and getting a bigger picture of like who Brazil actually is. But I wanted to take this opportunity to actually share some opinions and some feelings that I have that I apply to what I do professionally on an everyday basis. I think there's like 10 total things here. They're in no particular order of how I approach things professionally. Let me begin with this. In my opinion, the hottest take is not always the best take. In fact, it's rarely the best take. You think about sports and our job in the media. Something happens, you react to it, and instantly you're supposed to have some spicy, clear-cut, well-defined position on what just happened or how it happened or who did what. You need to be one way or the other instantly. And that's kind of the mold of our business because if you have that opinion and if it's popular and if it catches on, your program, your network, your whatever, your channel, it gets more attention. It kind of platforms you. It helps everything that you're doing by having strong opinions on things. Problem is, sometimes just by nature, you're not supposed to have a strong opinion on this or on that. It takes some time to realize how you should truly feel or what is truly right or wrong. And it's kind of a copycat game where a lot of people in our business see that the hot takes work. So oftentimes, they'll just develop a hot take for the sake of having a hot take, not because they believe in it, because they think it'll actually work in making them or their product or, or their whatever just look and do better. So hot takes are out there, and it's fine to have them on occasion. Sometimes a hot take is something that's been brewing inside you for quite some time, and yeah, you got to let it out. And you really feel that way because you're your position is so well-formed, and I totally understand that. But in our business of sports media, the hot takes, they, they just happen so fast, and they feel like they're almost unnecessary. It's okay to say, I don't know how to feel about this yet. I'm not sure how to think about this yet. Time will tell. That's an okay thing to say in real life, but for whatever reason in sports media, we don't do it a lot. So I try and actually take that position from time to time. Platforms don't necessarily matter, but words do. What do I mean by platforms? It could be a podcast. It could be a YouTube channel. It could be broadcast television. It could be a pregame show. It could be a game broadcast. It could be an intermission report. It doesn't matter where you say something. Your words matter equally across all of them. And I think for whatever reason, there's a cross-section of people. Maybe it's an age demographic thing or how you grew up with the internet or not. Some people think that you can go on a podcast and all of a sudden say whatever you want because it's a podcast and that's different, right? I mean, technically the way it's delivered and consumed is different than the traditional methods, but people still consume a podcast or read a tweet or look at an Instagram post all the same way. I guess I'd, I didn't even throw social media really in there. That's a platform. There's a bunch of different platforms. You represent you across all the different platforms. So I kind of hate to see it where somebody is one thing on one platform and then totally different on a different platform. All of a sudden, they're super aggressive over here in their thoughts and their takes, and this is really who they are, or this is their different persona, but they're something totally different over here. Just remember, it doesn't matter where you're saying these words and having these opinions, and you are who you are no matter what platform it is. And that kind of goes right into my next point here. I would never say anything into a microphone that I also wouldn't repeat in person, like in front of somebody. And I mean that in the sense of mostly my, my day job as a pre and post game host. Like if we're critiquing a player or a coach or a team or a front office, 
I don't want to go say something here and now, just me and you in my home studio that I think nobody's going to hear. I, I don't want to be the tough guy here and then also not walk into a dressing room or a baseball clubhouse or a football locker room or a basketball uh, locker room. I don't want to walk in and, and say, well, this is totally different now. You have to have responsibility and accountability for the things you say. So I would never say them with the protection of a studio around me in an environment where nobody else is around. I would never say things here that I also wouldn't say like directly in front of the person who I'm talking about. And that's kind of my golden rule. It's always been that way because I understand that they might see this clip. Their family members, their immediate family members might see this clip of me talking about them or their father, their mother, their siblings, whatever. It's going to get back to that person if it's that important in this day and age. And so I'm just trying to be proper here, right? I think it's only the respectful thing to do when I talk about other people, their performance, their jobs, their lives. I wouldn't say anything here or here on YouTube that I wouldn't say to the person I'm talking to or, or about directly. I, wouldn't, I would not hesitate to say it with them in the room as if they were right here while I'm talking about it into a microphone. Hopefully that made sense. I'm always mindful that I never played at that level. Baseball and hockey are the two sports I've mainly covered for the last decade plus, and I never was a professional baseball player or a professional hockey player. And so I can't sit there and criticize somebody so far to say that they should have done this, they should have been better here, or why didn't they do that, or this is embarrassing. First off, again, wouldn't say it on TV or into a microphone unless I would also say it with them in the room. But I'm mindful that I'm the one here to ask questions of professionals who have been in that position, who have played at that highest level. The quick analogy that I use sometimes is in my personal life, I'm big into aviation. I became a commercial pilot and a certified flight instructor. And so when people talk to me who are not pilots about aviation or flying or airplanes, I'm the one who all of a sudden knows what I'm talking about. I feel confident in my opinions and my background and my experience and my knowledge. I've been to some of the highest levels, you could say, of aviation. But in terms of professional sports, I've witnessed it. I've been around it. And I think in some cases, broadcasters feel more confident because the more you're around it, the more you feel like you're part of it. And I am part of it, but I never actually did it. So I'm always mindful that in my criticisms, I have to understand that my experience personally does not lend itself to that expertise. I'm also always mindful that I don't actually know most of the people I cover or their full, sto full stories. I should say that because what, what leads you to understanding this is actually meeting some of the people that you cover and understanding some of the full stories that not everybody is aware of, what it took them to get to professional sports or what they're doing to try and stay on the team or the struggles that they go through on or off the field, on or off the ice. Trust me, you don't even know what it's like behind the scenes for a lot of these athletes. And sure, the public front-facing side, it's great. They're superstars. They make a ton of money. They're heroes on occasion. But they're still people, and they still have things. And so I'm always mindful that, you know, some people, yes, I do know personally, and I can talk more confidently about them. But a majority of these athletes on the local teams or the teams that they're facing, I don't know them personally. You really can't go in on somebody or criticize them or, or have some strong opinions on them because I don't know them. I don't know, again, their entire backstories or what they're going through right now uh, or what they're up against. So it's an assumption, I think, for a lot of sports media people to think that they know everything and they know everybody and, and they can pinpoint somebody based on a prototype of somebody else they know. It's not true. Until you know somebody and you know their full story, you probably shouldn't approach it as if you do. You should just be mindful of that. Stay curious and stay honest. Those are two approaches kind of blended into one that I think is, is my best way of operation here. I don't think there's anything wrong with being a curious individual. Me asking questions that you, the fan, want the answer to. Honesty, right? You can see why I'm asking these questions. You can see my purpose, my intent. I think curiosity 
and honesty are obviously good traits of any human being, but especially somebody in the sports media business. I'm curious about how a player's doing, how a team is doing, what's going on in the front office, what's the business operations of this franchise like. And I'm not trying to uncover something that's a conspiracy theory or far-fetched. So long as you kind of stay around the rails a little bit and you're curious and you're honest and you're diligent and you do what you say you're going to do, I think those are very good traits for somebody in my position. Curiosity to the topic, curiosity to the circumstances and situations. And you know what? Even in tough, tough situations, right? Let's say you have an interview that's very difficult for whatever reason to pull off. And the athlete or the sports person that I'm talking to, they're not really comfortable with this. And I'm not really comfortable asking all these questions, which get intense for whatever reason. As long as my curiosity is there and my honesty is there, I feel like that gets you through a lot of those situations. Some things are actually better left unsaid. Yeah, I know. And occasionally, yeah, you can dunk on somebody. Like, it's so easy. It's lined up. They're, they're right there in the key. I've got the basketball. I'm two dribbles away from taking off and boom, dunking on them. But you really don't need to do that every single time. That gets old. It gets fatiguing. Some things can be seen without being said. I don't need to say them because there's 10 other people saying it. Or I don't need to say it because, well, here's a picture of it. And if that needs interpretation, there's something wrong here. You don't need to say all your feelings or all your beliefs or every single thing that's on your mind. Because again, there is a certain amount of overkill that's involved with that, but also a certain amount of appetite that's out there. You just don't need to say every single thing that comes to your brain. Whether it's controversial, spicy, or pedestrian in an everyday topic, not everything needs to be said. Some things in a lot of different ways are just better left unsaid. I also firmly believe that it's way more important to get things right than to get them absolutely first. And I've seen this so many times on occasion where something comes out, you think you fully understand it, and maybe there's multiple parties involved or there's different layers of it, but all you're seeing is that top layer. And you're not yet seeing layer two or three or four. Now, everybody's focused on layer one, right? And that's the hot issue and that's where everybody's at. Okay, well, if you're pretty confident that there might be a layer two or three that's equally or more important, hang on a second. Let's see where this is going. Let's make sure this is where it's actually going. Because it is so much more difficult to have to go through the whole apology process and admitting you were wrong and trying to explain yourself. And that's, you know what, that's honest too. And I, and I do appreciate people uh, trying to go back and right their wrongs. But you, you break bonds. You break trust by putting things out just because you, you can get them first or you desire to get them first. I get it. It's kind of like the hot takes thing. Whoever gets it first, the most attention. They're the ones that broke the story. They get credit for it. Yeah, and from time to time, you're going to be the one to break stories. I am totally okay not being the first, but my absolute goal is to try and get it comprehensive and get it right when I actually do approach a story. And that way people trust you a lot more. I also really try and keep perspective that almost nothing I cover in my day-to-day life of, of the sports media business, almost none of it involves life and death. And thankfully so. You know, when I was a lot younger, 25 years ago, getting into this business, There was an opportunity to work in local news. And for a while, I thought that might be a path I was interested in. No, not the sports side. I mean the actual local news of politics and crime and everything else that local news covers. But it's a pretty brutal world out there and some pretty life and death topics on an every day and night basis. And I quickly realized that wasn't for me. And so having that experience and also just getting a little bit older and more mature you realize that sports are generally fun and there are some things that make you happy and make you disappointed and make you upset. Some things you're going to lose sleep over. Some things you're going to be on cloud nine over. But almost none of it, like at the end of your life, is going to be important as life and death. 
We treat it that way. We have no other choice sometimes but to feel those ways. But I always try and put that into perspective. And when it is a sports story that does involve life and death, I really try and do it the best <clears throat> just as possible. I think this is the last thing here, and this is kind of a, a more recent revelation of how I approach things. These clips of me, the shows, the YouTube videos, the social media clips, whatever, I don't know how the internet and social media is going to be in 10, 20 plus years, 40 years. Will it still exist somewhere, somehow? I don't know. We all don't know. But these clips of me right here, right now, they might live beyond me. And as I became a dad, I mean, I've always been somebody who was trained in the broadcast way of not cursing and being a little bit more clean cut and appropriate in my delivery. And I've just kind of held on to that. Even though here on YouTube, I can say essentially whatever I want. The language can be as colorful as I want, but I just kind of stick to who I've always been. And another reason that I've kind of stayed who I am is because I'm a father. And my son, soon enough, will be easily old enough to search his dad on YouTube or wherever else. And I'm not saying that I, I can't say a bad word here and there or have a strong opinion or thought here and there. That's fine. I want him to know who dad is and was and whatever in the moment. That's totally fine. But if I'm constantly somebody who's just like a bad human being and acting like I'm 24 when I'm 42 and... I just, I don't want that to go down as like, here's who this person was. I feel like a lot of people making material today, they forget that it might live on forever. And when they're a lot older and their grandkids are asking about them, is this you? I don't know if you can delete it so easy. Anyway, I'm mindful that what we're doing right now is covering the things here and now but they might be able to be seen forever and ever. It's not like the old days of television where it was on once and nobody recorded it on VHS, so it's gone for good. Well, things get saved and they're easily accessible by anyone at any time. So these clips might live beyond me and I'm careful of that. So look, I went way too long in this, but I just wanted the opportunity kind of selfishly to share my approach in all this, how I do what I do, why I do it, Again, I think you can kind of get a, a picture of me already by putting together the pieces of, well, he covers this, he does this, here's who he is, and, and I appreciate that. It's It's been fun to kind of be known, I guess, in a certain way without me actually knowing you, but I wanted the chance to at least explain it in my own way and in my own words. You've made it here to the video, the end of the video, which is, yeah, probably way too long. I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so I can definitely see you back here next time.